of herbs we say you deaf are what? What's good, y'all? It's me, Mikey, back again today with another episode of Smoke Bang, where we smoke, talk shit, and eat good. Um, today is just me on a solo. Um, Boogie is not available today. Well, he's around. He's just gonna do solos today, you know, spread out the content. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I'm just here today, man, chilling. Um, pretty productive day. Been trying to get into these habits, uh, making them more consistent and all that. So I'm kind of doing my thing. I feel good about the progress that I'm making. You know what I'm saying? Um, how y'all doing? How y'all work around y'all habits? Is there anything that y'all working on for this year? I know it's like really cliche and everybody has these New Year's resolutions and all that type of shit, but this is not really a resolution for me. Um, it's just more so about consistency and really trying to bang out the things that I've had compounded for quite some time, you know what I'm saying? So, um, <clears throat> I feel like I'm good on the path that I'm going, you know what I'm saying? Or, um, I'm smoking on today. I'm smoking on some, a mix of some sour and wedding cake. It's pretty lit. I'm a herbalist, man. So anything that pretty much goes in my spliff, outside of fucking bushweed and Ari and all that shit, um, I'm pretty okay with it, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, today, you know, this channel, like, well, this smoke bang thing, we wanted to keep it pretty light and jovial and not so, uh, you know, harping on current events or like all the crazy fuckery that's happening in the world, you know what I'm saying? But um, what I want to talk about today is something that was passed on to me yesterday by a pretty good friend of mine, you know, co ex-co-worker, you know what I'm saying? Um, someone that I respect their opinion, you know what I'm saying? We, we have, we used to have, uh, you know, mental back and forth with each other a lot, you know what I'm saying, discussions when we work together. Um, so I definitely respect his opinion um, and where he's coming from. But uh, he shared with me this YouTube video from some dude named Coleman Hughes. So I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with this, this guy. Um, I wasn't. This is the first time I've seen anything of his, any content of his, anything of his, heard him speak. Um, but it's a pretty well-spoken black guy. Um, but specifically what he was talking about in this video was systemic racism. And the, I guess in his case, his point of view, the non-existence of systemic racism. And uh, that shit, at first glance, that shit like boggled my mind. Um, you know, I was asked what I thought about it. And you know what I'm saying? Just off the glance of the first thing, I was like, this nigga needs to get boxed. You know what I'm saying? And my friend let me know like, uh, he didn't say anything wrong. So I watched it a few more times. And, you know, I'll put a, the link into it so you guys can check it out on your own. But it's pretty much, I'm glossing over it. The clip that I saw is about eight minutes long. Um, so what he pretty much was saying was that the, the notion of systemic racism is a myth. And that, um, you know, it's not even a popular opinion based on polling numbers by... Uh, you know, some by people, I guess, uh, researchers, respected researchers and things uh, that show that, that that systemic racism is not even a popular opinion amongst black people, um, which to me was once again mind blowing. Um, so he was coming from he what he f was doing was sort of placing side by side uh, different uh, uh, black cultures. So African Americans in comparison to West Indians who come West Indian immigrants essentially. Um, I'm from a family of West Indian immigrants. My parents, my mom is Antiguan, my pops is Guyanese. 
Um, they both were born in their countries, came here. I'm first generation, that's how you say it. First generation born here, me and my brother. Um, so, I'm very familiar with all a lot of my closest friends, people I call brothers are all West Indians, come from the same type of upbringing and households as far as that goes. And what he was saying was that West Indian people come here to this country and they work hard, have their head down, and they make it. Um, so why can't the African American do the same thing? And to me, it's like, uh, you're right. You're absolutely correct. Those people, immigrants from West Indian, the West Indies come here and they, they, they put into action what it is that they learned and how they grew up and the experiences they had and everything from their upbringing, their countries. They come here and they take the opportunities that I guess weren't afforded to them as far as like uh, job placement and job opportunities and things like that um, to then catapult themselves up, sort of pull themselves up out of bootstraps type shit. Um, that's true. But the key point to, of that to me is that that this America is not their culture. You know what I'm saying? Their children, a lot of them that I know, uh, come here and they, even though they're raised in that household with the same West Indian values and all the upbringing and the strictness of the household and all of this, you still are subject to being an African American because that's, that's what you are, you know? And that is um, the systemic racism. So my friend let me know, uh, he feels there's no more systemic racism today. There's discrimination in certain industries. Well, we, I asked him to list the industries. I actually listed the industries for him. Uh, prison system, mass incarceration, um, the war on drugs, which we all know is a war on black and brown people, uh, food quality disparities, education disparities, um, the sister who I, I don't know her name off the top of my head right now, but we all know the one who, uh, you know, forced her or lied about her child's address in order to get her kid into a better school district is faced with double digit jail sentences as opposed to a white famous person who did the same thing and gets a slap on the wrist. You know, they get to choose where they want to go and all that type of shit. We all know these cases. To me, it feels like it's so blatant in your face that the the the, the disparity as far as what um, you know what I'm saying, what African Americans are up against, as opposed to those people who are not, aka white people. You know, it's just the truth. Uh, jail. He, he pointed out to me that a lot of the crimes have been. Uh, committed by black people. Bro, we make up a small amount of percentage, but over 50% of the jail population. That shit just doesn't seem to make any sense. A lot of those, those crime convictions have to, I don't have real numbers on paper, but I can let you know, I'm pretty sure that a lot of those are nonviolent drug offenses. You know what I'm saying? And once again, we all know drugs wasn't put here. We didn't bring it here. You know what I'm saying? Um, we did what we had to do. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not by any stretch of the imagination saying that we don't have a lot of hopelessness and ignorance and laziness and all the things that, you know what I'm saying, hamper us as a people. But it's we're up against a lot more than a lot of other people. Financial literacy. There's things we we don't learn the, the inside tricks and the trades that these the other people get passed down to them in generations. To, you know those, that knowledge. Our knowledge that gets passed down is welfare. Stay on welfare. Stay on Section Eight. Um, or the ones who make it uh, go to college, get a job, work for 40, 30, 20 years, however long it is, and retire. That's fuckery. You know what I'm saying? That's not how wealth is amassed and how wealth is maintained and passed down through generations. All of those things are things that we are up against and they're intertwined, intertwined into the system. There's, there's obviously black people who rise, the black elite from all early the Renaissance times and um, Black Wall Street and all those things. 
all of our leaders in the past who were to me way greater than than lady leaders we have now all been sniped down and cut down you know what i'm saying so it's i'm not a fool to think that um there aren't people who have made it who come up and made it and you know what i'm saying did they think but those odds are a lot to to have to hurdle you know what i'm saying and the ones who do usually get cut down bro the ones who get in barack obama got into office you can't really be the president of the united states and really help black people it doesn't really coincide you know what i'm saying if you want to read but i wasn't a huge fan before reading obama's book but i read it and it just gave me a different insight as to the shit that he had to deal with and which is pretty much distractions from you know what i'm saying specifically helping the black community you know what i'm saying it doesn't happen from the white house you know but uh it was just interesting to me to hear like his uh this guy mm, Coleman Hughes and his stance on systemic racism or the absence of it or the the non-existence of it, you know? Um, so let me know what y'all think, you know what I'm saying? What do you think? Do you think that it's something that it's a myth and we are holding on to it and being still holding on to trying to be a victim? Which that's not what I'm saying either. I'm not saying trying to sit and be, oh, this is what's happening to me. It's just a realization and, you know what I'm saying, knowing what's actually happening. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to shroud my eyes or put on blinders about, you know what I'm saying, what is really going on. You know? So, um, let me know. You know what I'm saying? I want to know what y'all think. Um, like I said, this is just something that, you know, intrigued me because it was like, damn. That's like where you coming from, you know what I'm saying? Where, where would, what America do you live in? You know what I'm saying? So, um, let me know which I think, you know what I'm saying? It's Comey Hughes, I'm gonna put the, the, the link and all of that. I might put a screenshot of the actual thumbnail on here too for y'all to see and all that. So you can let me know in the comments, um, but yeah, it was very, it was interesting to me. You know what I'm saying? Very interesting. But on that note, about to fade these wings. You know what I'm saying? As black people love, love up some wings. You know what I'm saying? So about to fade these, set these up for y'all, and I'll be back. All right, y'all. Was good. I'm back. Got these motherfucking wings, Kosh. You are. I got wing stop, you know what I'm saying? I was gonna, um, I wanted to try uh, this one spot on a, um, on a Upper East Side, like International Wing Company or some shit. But um, I ended up going to uh, Harlem, you know what I'm saying? So I stayed, I just got the wing stop. Um, eh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, they 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 straight or whatever. I feel like I make better wings, but I just ain't even want to deal with the cooking today. You know what I'm saying? So what I got? I got lemon pepper, right, chill. Then hold on, what's the other joints? I'm eating. I'm eating. Oh, the, yeah. oh, right. the lemon pepper joints, right? Then I got the mango habanero, right? And then the motherfucking hickory smoke barbecue. You know what I'm saying? I have to get some for my baby. You know what I'm saying? She don't really deal with the spice. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's that. Let me bust these down. Oh, and the blue cheese. I'm not really no ranch type of dude like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, blue cheese are my thing here. All right, let me start. What I'm going to do with the first. Let me bust a lemon pepper. You know what I'm saying? Get my palate right with that. Dip them dry. Mm. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. Um. That crunch is just right on these joints. I always are skeptical with getting like a um. I delivered wing. 
but you always run the risk of a soggy well let me get to the joints the joints with the sauce on it first before I talk shit cuz lemon pepper don't got no sauce so it can serve as crispness feel me? Oh, look at the drip. Pause. Alright. Mm -hmm. I'm double and triple dripping. I just made it right. Me as a personal way, I'm gonna eat the gristle, you know what I'm saying? All that, I'm part of the chicken. You know I'm saying, always a debate when people eat wings. You know and I'm saying like, oh, what's your favorite fly drum? Um, how you eat your joints? But I'm a, I guess I'm a joint. I bust down the whole gristle, clean out the whole bone post. You know and I'm saying, I don't leave back nothing. Let me see my traditional barbecue joint. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. It's the exact crunch integrity. Not bad. It actually came pretty quickly. I ordered straight through the website, which I think they outsourced the DoorDash because that's who was hitting me about the notifications and all that. But I feel like if I did that shit through Uber, it would uh, took double the time, bro. Value me. Oh, and I got the fucking motherfucking corn too, you heard? The corn is fire. And corn is fire. I got, it's not focusing and all that, but. Y'all got, y'all seen wings stop all day long. Y'all seen wings stop corn before. I'm saying? All that up in the jaw. All that up in the jaw. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Had a bit of salt here. No, I told them. Let me rinse out my palate first. Before I get into these mango habaneros, you heard? And contrary, I bust down two drums already. Because I had to choose. I think I'm definitely a flat dude. You feel me? Something about the jousting of breaking apart the bones. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I usually. 
my technique runs the gamut of breaking and dipping or just dipping first and dealing with the bottom and just dip the first time. And then I held them away from my palate to close. Uh, this is the first time I'm having these mango habanero. My favorite fire. Not that I necessarily taste like a mango, but it's like a, a some sort of citrusy, tropic, tropical fat. Makes me feel like I'm back at Hong Kong. And I'm kind of. And a halo heat in the back with the habaneros. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just realized the Super Bowl is coming up too next week. These men make me think about that. We are that. I think Patty's here to take over. Dealing with seltzer, I'm trying to still deal with my carbonation, but let's show you lemon lime drink. It's an acquired taste. Yeah, I think um. How you say take over? Mm. I don't believe I can give him a game though. I I wouldn't be surprised though if that fucking vampire pulls it out. I'm terrible. There are a few vampires that are at the top of the game, like Pharrell. Pharrell's a fucking vampire, bro. I'm huh? Benjamin Button of it. Um, well. <laughs> Benjamin Buttons. I really like that movie. Focus takes a second to jump back. I said it before, but I 
They valid though. Damn, there's a coin. I'm gonna look at coins. Then full y'all. I know I got time to eat a lot, but oh. five wings. This is a point. I guess. When I'm not, I'm gonna say the barbecue for my baby. I'll do with another mango habanero. So I was hoping with this lemon lime joint that I was uh gonna give be reminiscent of Sprite. Eh. Eh. Slightly there. Not really. Um <clears throat> there's other five up here. I think the best joint is uh cranberry lime. That joint fired up. That joint fired up. One more. One more for the get out. One more for the get out. One more for the get out. Uh, last one. And I'm off this. Alright y'all. Full terras one. Alright. I hit. Go looking. Um check out that video that I came about. Let me know if it is thing. Um I'll comment, like, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? As Boogie says, be good to your people. Holla at y'all.